In a quiet corner of Abu Dhabi is a city that has the potential to change the world. Mazda City has been 16 years in the making and is designed to be as energy efficient as possible, powered entirely by renewables with no combustion engine cars at all. And there were you, thinking that Abu Dhabi was all about oil. So what is Mazda City? Well, it's a revolutionary project designed to create the city of the future. Conceived in 2008, development of the city will continue over a series of planned phases. Mazda City is a testbed for urban sustainable science for efficiencies in energy, water, mobility, food, health tech, space and AI. A unique green city in the middle of a desert. It's transformed decades of research, visions and ideas into a living practical reality. But those visions of clean, utopian cities are nothing new. We've been dreaming about them for years. But Mazda City is one of the first to really show us how technology will play a fundamental role in shaping the urban living spaces of the future. Walking around these streets, there's more to the architecture than just modernism. The buildings and spaces have been designed to maximise shade and funnel the air to cool the temperature. Everything was designed to reduce the energy consumption inside the buildings, but also increase the livability and the walkability of your comfort outside. So we took inspiration from Shabom in Yemen, a city built 700 years ago. And narrow streets, buildings that shade each other, smaller windows, and then on top of that we layered the technology. It's 10 degrees cooler right now where we're standing than it would be in downtown Abu Dhabi, and that's due to how we block the sun and let the wind flow in. So tell us about the solar, because when you first started, solar was 40 cents per kilowatt hour. Yes, approximately 40 cents per kilowatt hour. And now? Now, we can now produce in Abu Dhabi at less than a penny and a half per kilowatt hour. Done at scale, at, at 200 times the size of what we were doing 12 years ago. And that's the key, isn't it? It is affordable energy. And if we, if we can transition from polluting dirty fossil fuels to renewable, low carbon, sustainable electricity, Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Now, there are a few steps along the way. We still have an intermittency issue. Yeah. The sun doesn't shine at night. Yeah, but you can have batteries to, to give that flexibility. You will have to get to storage to have that flexibility. Like we've done with the renewable energy itself, we need to have that same revolution in terms of battery performance. And we need governments around the world to put stakes in the ground and say, we need to be more sustainable around electric vehicles. We need to encourage that adoption. Talking of vehicles, tell us about this, this program. Well, this is our partner, Navia. It's the second generation of autonomous vehicles. You can actually come to Mazdaar City and try one, and you tell it where you want it to go, and it drives itself. You could jump in front of this, and it will stop. Let's hope. I mean, let's hope. Uh, I noticed that you position yourself up. Oh. Yes, it will stop. I did notice you position yourself farther away from the vehicle than me. It's like, okay, I trust you, but not all the way, Steve. No, completely, but look, it would appear at first, first sight that autonomous vehicles here are safe as houses. And at Mazda, they have their own personal rapid transport system. And this is so good because people don't want to travel on buses. When you're talking mass transportation, they want small, comfortable spaces, a lot like their cars. So this is a stroke of real brilliance. I'm going to go to the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. Another genius of Mazda City lies underground. A two kilometer network of tunnels that's already carried two million passengers. Sustainable transport choices like this reduce the need for combustion vehicles on the surface. And that means less congestion, less smog and cleaner air. And the idea of replacing a car with a personal mobility pod, which we've always dreamed of for years and years and years, well, here it is, a carbon-free ride. This is plush, comfortable, convenient, and infinitely preferable to driving around in frustrated circles looking for a parking space. So we've arrived, unruffled, cool, no stress, 
Transport for London, look on and sigh with admiration. What I've shown you here just skims the surface. There's so much more going on that I could make a six-part documentary. But the enormous challenge of building a sustainable city in the searing heat of the desert, well, that, that is perhaps the greatest achievement of all. So look, for politicians, legislators, policymakers who might be watching, what would you say that they can learn from your 16 years experience? Set the standards high and then work with the private sector, work with the developers, work with the architects, work with the renewable energy companies to hit those standards, but set targets and enforce them. And sustainable cities, that kind of beatific goal that the world has been talking about for years and years and years, they are achievable, aren't they? Oh, well, we are right here. It's, it's being achieved as we speak. And I would say, look, sustainability is not now. Sustainability is not a one-time target. With each development that we do, each building that we do, we get more sustainable. The problems that every city faces are being tackled here at Mazda with astonishingly successful results. This is a template for the sustainable city of the future. And from where I'm standing, it looks very promising indeed.